All right, guys. I'm going to do a video here uh, showing everyone how I use the uh, spec map feature with uh, with our templates. Um, the the templates don't really work well um, the way iRacing intended um, for the smart object parts of our templates. Um, basically, you could go and add your your spec maps to this side of the template. Um, doing so would work. Um, and then you would have to make your changes, save it, go back over to the main template and uh, make a save. Uh, the problems the problem starts um, with the spec map in the main template overlapping the smart object save that you do you know from the uh, smart object template. So um, this is the way I've found to work best. Uh, it's by no means perfect. It has problems here and there. Uh, but for the most part, it's worked for me for the uh, cars that I've been doing. Um, if you guys have other methods, I would love to hear from you uh, just to kind of see what the community is doing. But uh, I figured I'd just uh, take some time and show everyone how to do it as I've been getting a lot of questions on how I, how to, you know, how to work with the templates and everything. So, um, so what I've done here is I've got our uh, Heatwave Designs Dirt Lake model car here. Um, I already had the spec maps made for this template. Um, however, I've deleted those uh, layers in the uh, group, in the spec map group. And I'm going to show you guys how to add the Chrome feature to the lettering and numbers on this car. Now, this is all assuming that you already have all of your artwork laid out. Um, what you would do in this case for this car, um, everything that you see that tan color, we want to be gold on the car. Now, to do that, what I will do is I will grab the magic wand tool and I will select a piece of the car of that color um, that I want to manipulate. Now, it's very important that you have the sample all layers checkbox checked so that when you do a select similar, it grabs everything in the template. When you have the sample all layers box checked, basically what it does is it acts as if anything on the screen is a single layer. The, the magic wand tool will act as if everything is a single flat image and it will select things that are in other layers besides the one you have highlighted. Now, <clears throat> again, what I've done is I've just selected a piece of the color that I want spec mapped. Now, I'll go up here to hit select, and I'll hit similar. That will grab everything in this template that is that color. Over in your spec map group, you've got a metallic channel and a roughness channel. For chrome or super reflective colors, what you want to do is in the metallic channel, you want a new layer with the white, true white uh, bucket fill. In the roughness channel, you want a new layer with a true black bucket fill. Now, once you have this selection made, you'll go over here and down in the bottom, you'll select a one of your layers that you've just made in the spec map group. You'll go down here and find this rectangle with the punch out in it. And what that'll do is that'll add a layer mask from your selection to the layer that you have highlighted. Now I'm going to do that now. So in the roughness channel, we have a layer mask over the black layer that determines the reflectiveness or the, the glossy or matte finish in the roughness channel. So with all black, it's going to be super shiny. Now I've added that layer mask there. What I'm going to do now is I need to do it on the white layer that we have in the metallic channel. The way to do that is you can left control, left shift on that spec map, or excuse me, on that layer mask, and that will reselect everything in that layer mask. You go up here to layer three, the new white layer in the uh, metallic group, and you'll apply that layer mask again. If you've done so correctly, um, everything will, everything that's in that tan color will now be gold on the car. Now, I have actions set up here. I may, may do another video on how to set these actions up. Um, but basically, this just automates the save process. So at this point, you would save the car. Um, to do that, I'm going to turn the spec map group on. I'm going to go File, Save As. Find your uh, 
paint folder under your iRacing folder. Change that to a Targa. Um, in this case, it's going to be car underscore spec underscore 258990. Now, the 258990 is my iRacing ID. You will need to replace this number with your iRacing ID. I'm going to save that. Now, I always do 24-bit uncompressed. I know some cars, like the new supercars, uh, I believe they require 32-bit, something to do with the uh, windows on the cars. I'm not entirely sure about that. Um, to my knowledge, it's irrelevant with my templates. So um, I recommend going 24-bits uh, uncompressed. I'm going to save that. I'm going to turn off the spec map group. We're going to turn off the guides group. And we're going to save the paint file as you normally would. And then we're going to turn our guide group back on. Now we're going to flip over to the car. And everything is chrome or gold rather. It should be gold. Now again, this is just my way of doing this. There's probably better options out there. I'm just not aware of them. And um, I've had a lot of questions on how to do this. So that's a good explanation and uh, demonstration of how I do that on a very simple basis there so hypothetical situation um, you want to do the base color a different finish than the gold logos for example the way I would do this with the base color of this car being white I would go over here and I would this is my base color from my hood what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a color that's not anywhere in the template. So, for example, this super bright pink, it's present nowhere in the template. And I'm going to do a paint bucket fill on this base layer. I'm going to open up my smart object, and I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to save that, and that will reflect on the main template now. Now, I've got a couple odds and ends here that are, not, uh, that are still white, uh, that I want to be chrome. Um, I'm going to open up my color change logo or color change group here and there's my roof color, my roof cap and then the cell panels. Now everything of the base color being white is now pink and what I'm going to do is the same kind of concept. I'm going to get my magic wand tool and I'm going to select a piece of the pink, select and similar. Now that will grab everything that was pr previously white. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer. Control Shift N will create you a new layer. Uh, I'm going to apply that layer mask there. I'm going to do the same thing in the roughness channel. And left click, or excuse me, Control Left Click will highlight that selection again. And I'm going to apply that to the new layer in the roughness channel. Now I need to go and add the colors for those layers. So in the roughness channel, if we're wanting chrome, we're going to go black. In the metallic channel, we're going to go white, and we're just going to do a simple bucket fill there. Now, just to test it, I'm going to save the car or the paint file in the spec map, and we're going to go over here. Now, this is going to look a little crazy. So, yes, everything you see now that was white is now a pink chrome. Uh, it looks more purple in the sim. But So, now that we have that done, we can go back and change our base colors that were previously white. We can change them back to white. And I'm going to do the save once more. Now everything should be chrome that was white. Yep. So you guys kind of see how that works. Now I've got one more uh, scenario, maybe you, we can call it, that would come into play. Um, I'm going to delete those two that we just did to make the white background chrome. Uh, just to make this more simple and easier to understand. So at this point, the only thing that is reflective on the car is the gold lettering. Now, say we want to do all of the logos except maybe one of them. Maybe one logo you have on your car just isn't going to show up right if you do a chrome overlay on it. The way I do this is I will open up and find that logo in my layer group. I'm going to do a color overlay on it of another color that's not existent anywhere else 
in the template. In this case, bright pink. I'm going to save that. Now, as you can see, all the other logos are just like they were. That one Fortune Auto logo has a pink overlay on it. When we do a select similar, it will not be considered because it is pink now. So I will do the same process. Grab a piece of the tan, select similar. That will grab all the tan colors on the car. I'm going to delete these layer masks from the previous edit. And I'm just going to apply those layer masks to these layers in the spec map group. I'm going to go back. I'm going to turn this color overlay off. I'm going to save. And I'm going to save the paint file to the iRacing folder. Again, I'm doing that with an action. I may uh, show you guys how to do that in a later video. Uh, go over to iRacing, Control R, and everything should be spec mapped except the Fortunato, and it looks like it worked correctly. So, again, this is just how I do this. Um, it's by no means perfect. It does have some issues every now and then. A uh, common issue that I've seen is having the tolerance set too high or too low. I find that 32 is a good baseline. Um, sometimes you may need to go up. Sometimes you may need to go down. just depends on what you're working with. Um, if you guys have any uh, questions about this, feel free to message me. Uh, I will help any way that I can. And I hope this video was helpful. Um, if you guys do this a different way, uh, feel free to comment below and let us know how you do it. Um, maybe between the community we can all come to a uh, solution that works for everybody. Um, again, if you guys have any questions, feel free to shoot me a message and I will uh, get back with you as soon as I can. Thanks.